Good morning, everybody. How y'all doing on this Monday? Welcome to Sex Talk with Sharonda Parker. I am Sharonda Parker, and I would like to welcome all of the new members um, to our group. And um, if you are new, then uh, this group voted on a name to be called by, and the name that won was The Bold and The Curious. So I want to welcome you all to Sex Talk with Sharonda. And today we are going to be talking about orgasm and what orgasm is and what it isn't and making sure that you understand that, um, that, oh goodness, the word just slipped my mind. Um, but there are 12 different types of orgasms that are recognized as far as textbook sexologists that's the, that's the word i was looking for Sex, sexologists um have basically did research and they have determined that there are 12 types of orgasms and we are going to talk about all 12 of course not today because this is a lot of information to cover and i do believe in taking my time when i'm teaching these lessons because a lot of you all are in this group because you want to learn um of course you want you like playing you know doing the little questions and answers with everybody but the majority of you all are in this group because you are interested in learning okay and that's the purpose of me creating the group to have a, a place where women can come and get educated um on sex and sexual health and wellness and you know of course learn how to turn up in the bedroom and of course, you know, to be able to win stuff and play games and then just to have a, a form of um, sisterhood in the group. So if you can hear me, let me know that you can hear me so that I know that it's okay for me to move forward. Okay. So I just want to move this so that it can be seen because I love my logo. I love the PPG logo. Okay. So I just want to make sure that. Here we go. So I think we got a, a, a pretty good amount of people for us to be able to start, okay? So you're gonna see me doing a lot of moving back and forth. Can you see me? Can you hear me? Um, are there any glitches on your end? Let me know, okay? I know some people are still trying to get in. Um, and we're gonna talk about orgasms and exactly what an orgasm is how how was it defined because i think sometimes that we were taught what an orgasm was and we just took that and um kind of ran with it but when i get to breaking this down you're going to learn that you don't know as much as you think you know and when it comes down to the topic of sex a lot of us don't know as much as we think we know okay so orgasm the textbook definition of orgasm is a climax of sexual excitement characterized by feelings of pleasure, period. That's it. That's what an orgasm is. A climax of sexual excitement. Let's talk about sexual excitement. A lot of times when we think about orgasm, most of us only think of it in terms of our genitals. And that is a big misconception because people inbox me all the time and say, did I have an orgasm? And my response a lot of times is, if you had an orgasm, you're gonna know that you had an orgasm. The most common orgasm is the one that we reach with our clitoris. That's the most common one but you have 11 more orgasms out there. And you may have reached them and you might not have reached them. So we're gonna get into that because a lot of times we are molded to think that there's only one type of orgasm and that is not true. There are 12 different types of orgasms that the sexologists recognize, okay? After they did all of their research they recognize 12 of them. Another part of the definition of orgasm is characterized by feelings of 
pleasure. Okay? This is the part of the live where you start sending in your questions and I will answer your questions if you have questions concerning orgasms. Okay? How many of you all held somebody's hand, right? And you just met them, new new dates, like new new dating, you just starting to feel this person, and they did something just as simple as touch your hand. And it's like they touched your hand and your body just went crazy. How many of y'all experienced this? They touched your hand and then your pussy doing this on the inside. It's just jumping. It's going crazy. Talk back to me. How many of y'all experienced this before? And I'm going to tell you what type of orgasm that was that you experienced. If somebody ever touched you and you had all of your clothes on, they might have just came up on the back of your neck and just breathed on the back of your neck and touched the nape of your neck. And your body just started doing this. Like, your pussy just jumping. It's going crazy. When my, when, when my vagina does that, I say, my pussy talking. That's when I explain to somebody what my pussy talking me. When it's doing this and I got all my clothes on, my pussy talking. I'm going to tell you what type of orgasm that you experience. First of all, I need to know, have anybody ever experienced this? Because I only got one person. And that uh, looks like Sean, always standing Jones. She says she's the only person that didn't experience this. So I think me and Sean, we the only person that experienced this before. Please let me know. Me and Sean, me and Sean, we the only ones that didn't experience this. Let me know. Okay. The type of orgasm that you experience when that happens is called a skin orgasm or zoning orgasm, meaning that something touched you in a way on your body, skin, some type of way, and it aroused you. It got you going. Your body started experiencing pleasure. You had an orgasm, whether you know it or not. Yes, you did. You had an orgasm. Because if we go back to the definition of orgasm, a climax of sexual excitement characterized by feelings of pleasure, period. We have taken it upon ourselves to put orgasm into this one thing and say that it only happens one way and if it didn't happen this way, then that means I never had an orgasm to happen. And that is not the truth, okay? So if you did your homework like I asked you to, and I think we got enough people for me to go ahead and go, go forward with really teaching this, um, this live. A smile had you going crazy. Okay, you with me. Okay, you thought she was just hot. Okay, that's what, but no, that's, you was experiencing a, swim, a, a, a skin orgasm, uh, Miss Carol Scott. Okay, so if you did your homework, like I asked everybody to, you read um, my blog about the clitoris and how it is a wishbone. Okay, first of all, let me give you some facts about the clitoris, okay? The, the clitoris is the most nerve-rich part of the vulva. The gland contains about 8,000 nerve endings, making it a powerhouse for pleasure. A powerhouse for pleasure. All of those nerves. Now y'all know how small the clitoris is. Imagine 8,000 nerves in this one area. That's a fact about the clitoris. So if anybody asks you anything about the clit, you can let them know. The clit got about 8,000 nerves in that one area. The sole purpose of the clitoris is pleasure. That's its only purpose. Pleasure. It serves one purpose. And it's pleasure. So let's talk about the, uh, the, the clitoris. Now, a lot of times when we look at our body and we look at the man's body, their uh, shaft and our clitoris are very, very similar. The difference between theirs and ours is ours is strictly for pleasure, whereas theirs can be used for pleasure and reproduction. Our clitoris does not reproduce. Their penis reproduces. That's the difference between the two, but both of them experience pleasure, okay? Um, some women are unable to experience an orgasm from penetration alone. For these women, 
Having the clitoris touched in a pleasurable manner may be the only way an orgasm is possible for them as far as a clitoral orgasm. So when we say the word orgasm, it's so broad, but when we're talking about this one type of orgasm, which is a clitoral orgasm, in order to have it, you have to stimulate the clitoris. Okay. Now, what I learned over the years is if, if I look at a thousand vaginas, I can guarantee you that every last one of them are different. When my daughter, she's 16 years old, she's an artist, okay? And I, I'm gonna tell you, she's a professional artist. She has her own business. Taylor, she asked what I wanted for my birthday and I told her I wanted her to paint me a clip. I wanted her to paint it for me. If you went on my page, then you saw the painting. The problem that she had in the beginning was she said, Mama, I keep looking at the different clitorises, but all of them are different. And I told her that's what makes them so beautiful. They are all different. They are all unique. Nobody's is going to be like somebody's else. Okay? So let me tell you something. If you look at the clitoris, some people clitoris is um, really, really big. Some people have a clitoris that's really, really small and is more so covered by the hood, okay? So, every woman is different. Women are all unique, so why should clitorises be any different? Everyone needs to be, every woman needs a different types of stimulation in order to be satisfied. Just because it is sensitive does not mean that everyone wants to be stimulated directly. That's a big misconception. A lot of men think that they can touch every woman the same, but you have to let them know that I like it when you touch my clitoris soft. I like it when you apply a lot of pressure to it. I like it when you press down on it really, really hard. Everybody is different. When I use my toys, I use a lot of stimulation to my clitoris. Whereas some people, they come in and they be like, I can't even stand to be in touch. That's because theirs is extremely sensitive. Now, is one right or one wrong? No. It's no right or wrong. You just have to find what works for you. Okay? So let's talk about the hood of the clitoris and the pros and the cons. The hood is that, uh, that little round part, and then there's a little skin that covers it. Now, just imagine if that skin was not there, if that hood was not there on the clitoris. Imagine how all day long you walking, and if that clitoris was exposed all day long, how you would be like literally reaching orgasms all day long because the clitoris is exposed. The hood protects the clitoris, okay? So let me talk about the different things that the hood does, okay? I got all my notes. Y'all, right? if anything happened to this iPad, when I tell you I'm going to be screwed, I'm going to be screwed. This is like my lifeline, seriously. Um, let's talk about the hood. We already said that the clitoris has 8,000 nerves. So imagine those 8,000 nerves not having any protection. It's important that we know this and I break this down before I start getting into all of these different types of orgasms. The reason a lot of you are not reaching orgasms is because you know nothing about your body. You know nothing about the anatomy and how your body is made up. So what you can do is you can take your fingers and you can pull that hood back. But the purpose of that hood is to protect all of those nerve endings, okay? If the nerves are constantly being rubbed against the fabric of your clothing all day and night, that means that that tissue is going to be exposed and that you're going to constantly be sensitive. It, 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 it protects it because that is a very sensitive area on our body and if it is rubbed up against and if, even if you rub up against it too long, sometimes that pleasure can turn into pain if you're not being stimulated properly. That's why you got to open up your mouth while you're having sex and you got to let a person know if it feels good to you or no, don't do that because I don't like the way they feel. Some women like to have their clitoris sucked on. Some women do not want you sucking on their clitoris, but you have to open up your mouth and say, baby, everything can be done in love. Everything, every conversation can be had in love. And you can say, baby, 
I really love it when you suck on my clitoris. Or baby, it's not comfortable for me when you suck on my clitoris. I don't like that. I would much rather you kiss it or I would much rather you lick it. I would much rather you blow on it gently. But don't suck it because I don't like that. You have to be able to express those, um, you know, you have to let them know what you like and what you don't like, okay? Can the hood retract? Okay. So we already said that it's a lot of nerves in the clitoris and it's glands. That means that the clitoris actually grows and it gets bigger, okay? So it can start off one way and then by the time you are fully aroused, that thing will be standing up like a dick. For real. It can be standing up like a dick when it's all said and done. If it is aroused, that means all of the blood will rush to it and it will get erect just like a dick would, okay? Can it retract, meaning can it go back down? Yes, once your body reaches its orgasm and your body has settled, it will go back down just like a penis gets erect and then when it's all over, it starts to eventually shrink back down. It's, it's like a pulsating. Like you watching it, it's like a pulsating and it's like that. And then the dick you just start to get smaller and smaller. Aqua does the same exact thing, okay? Can you pull the hood back yourself? Yes, you can. Be very careful when you're doing it, okay? Um, the hood is connected to the inner lips of the vulva. If you place your fingers at the top and pull back, yes, you can pull the skin back, and you can expose the clitoris like that. I just want to make sure that I am covering all aspects of it. Okay. So, let me go to the clitoris orgasm. A lot of times, uh, clitoral orgasms are reached because we have a lot of stimulation, right? We can stimulate it with the fingers. You could take the dick and hit up against it. You know how when he about to get ready to put that dick in that pussy and he taking it, he, he, he knocked three times. Bam, bam, bam. People say, why do he hit the dick on the pussy or the ass three times? And uh, the meme said, because you, you, it's, it's uh, nice to knock before entering. So just take it as he just knocking on the pussy before he enter it, right? He can uh, stimulate the clitoris with his mouth, of course, and he can stimulate the clitoris with a toy, a finger toy, um, a bullet, or you can use a vibrator with a clitoris stimulator on it. It's a lot of different ways that it can be stimulated. If you have any questions or comments, this is the time for you to ask them. So. One thing that a lot of women did not know about the clitoris is that it's shaped like a wishbone and the clitoris does have legs. The reason I asked you to go and read the blog was because I don't have a way um, to actually show you the visual aid. So if you've already read it, then you know what I'm talking about. So we have the top of the clitoris and then we have the legs of the clitoris. A lot of times people like to put all of their focus on the top. But if you were to stimulate the legs of the clitoris, that means that a lot of the blood can rush to the hood of the clitoris, which will make it grow and in return, which will um, broaden your chances of having an orgasm. Let me see, do we have any questions? Didn't know it was an orgasm. I have, I have from a hood. She had a smile. Okay, I'm just making sure that I got all of the questions. Okay. How many of you all, by show a round of applause, on the page or a heart or like have experienced a clitoral orgasm because that's the one that most of us experience okay and then in the comment if you have not experienced a clitoral orgasm i need you to comment and say i have never experienced a clitoral orgasm and then i'm gonna send you the link to my video on youtube to show you how to properly bring yourself to an orgasm um, alone through masturbation, okay? I'm gonna send you the video that's gonna teach you how to masturbate. So only comment, I have never experienced a clitoral orgasm if you've never experienced one because I'm gonna personally, individually send you the link to that video so that you can learn how to bring yourself to a clitoral orgasm through masturbation. Using vibrating toys can desensitize the clit. 
Is there anything that can bring it back to normal? Erica Bell, time. Time will bring it back. Okay? Let me explain to you why. I love my toys. Okay? I love my toys. But sometimes when I'm having sex, I purposely do not bring a toy into it. I purposely make my body work for the orgasm. Which means my husband has to put in a lot more work to make it happen. But I purposely do not bring in toys. But it's a decision that you have to make for yourself. And say, you know what? This time when I'm having sex, I'm not bringing a toy into it. Because I want to make my body work for it. Okay? So the only thing that um, helps with that desensitizing you is time. Sometimes women get frustrated in the process of having to make themselves actually work for the orgasm, meaning that I'm not about to use a, a toy. I'm going to use my fingers. He's going to have to use his mouth. I'm going to have to ride. I'm going to have to grind. I'm going to have to, when I say grind, meaning that I'm going to have to get on top of him and actually grind up against his body to bring myself to an orgasm. Another thing that you can do is use something like the orgasmics. Well, it will help with the arousal, but you don't have to use the vibration from the vibrators to bring you to the orgasm, which still requires your body to work for the orgasm. Uh, let's see. All the time. A lot of times people think that piercings um, help with orgasms. Y'all, piercings are just decorations okay it's a piercing that goes through the hood a lot of times when you get aroused it rubs up against it but there's nothing that has uh, sexologists have done all type of research and they have no research that determines that when you have a piercing that you achieve more orgasms than a person that does not have a piercing a piercing is more so for your looks and of course if you have the piercing and you get aroused Sometimes that um, when you're aroused, it's touching and rubbing up against the, um, the piercing. But nothing says, no studies show that when you have a piercing, you reach more, you have more orgasms than a person that doesn't have a piercing. Any more questions? Any more questions? Any more questions? Okay. So, I'm just looking on here. I'm trying to see. I'm in 22 minutes. Okay, so let me talk about our MVP winner this week for Sex Talk with Sharonda. This person, let me go to my statistics. Let me go to the statistics. Mm. 97 posts, 546 comments. Miss Sean, 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 you are our MVP member this week. Miss Sean, Sean, Sean. Congratulations, sweetheart. Please DM me your mailing address so that I can get your prize out to you. Y'all make sure y'all congratulate her and let her know that she won. And another thing is if you notice that you are posting, you're sending posts, and you're not seeing the post, a lot of times somebody has already posted it and I'm trying to keep the timeline from getting jumped up with all types of the same post over and over and over again. If you submit it and you don't see it, it's because I did not approve it. Um, I know y'all wanna post up your boo and your bae and your man and your husband, but I'm choosing not to uh, post that in this group because what I know is it's a setup. It's a setup because sometimes that's going to be somebody else's boo, bae, or husband too. Okay? And I don't want to bring that negative energy into the group. So that's why you, your boo, your bae, your husband is not being posted. All right? Um, another thing that you're not seeing posted is all of these posts sabotaging men. Oh, they don't do number cheat. Y'all can write it in the coconut all you want to. And he gonna still go let somebody else ride it in the coconut. Those posts will not be published because, again, this group is to bring couples together. It's not to. Uh, this is not the male hate group. If that's what you into, go start you up one. I'm pretty sure you'll have a whole bunch of women that will get on there and y'all will male bash all day long. That's not what this is about. 
um, all of the posts about um, is this turning to a lesbian group? Or all you seeing is women wanting women and all of this kind of stuff. If you go back and you read the group rules, you will see that this group is a non-judging group. You will also see that if you are easily offended and people's sexual orientation bothers you and all of this kind of stuff, this may not be the group for you, okay? Um, I, I want an environment where women of all walks of life, when I say women, I'm talking about ladies, okay? Ladies of all walks of life can come in here and express themselves and learn together uh, in a, a sex positive environment. Um, so I don't care if you like to spit on a dick or you like to spit on a clip. It does not matter to me one way or another. Okay, as long as you spitting on it. Something. As long as you having fun in your bedroom. Um, I want to let you know that those of y'all who did the Rose Petal Challenge, y'all did an excellent job. I absolutely love the videos that I saw. If you didn't get a chance to do it this weekend, make it happen this week. It's supposed to be a surprise, y'all. That's the reason that I don't want men in this group. That's the reason I don't want studs in this group. I do not want your partner in this group, okay? So if you're the lady in the relationship or if you de de defined yourself as the lady in the relationship, how are you going to ever surprise them with anything if they in here and they're able to see everything before you even get to do it? It's purpose in everything. The reason that I asked about the birth control is because I order a Perkins. I don't know where you at, but I'm going to be getting with you real soon because I want you here on Sex Talk with Sharonda so that we can talk about um, the sexual health and well side. I mean, the sexual health and wellness side. I, I talk so fast sometimes. Um, and we want to talk about the pros and cons of all of these different birth controls. I don't take birth control. I, when I was a young woman and I was able to have children, we counted days, we did pull out, we did all types of stuff. I tried birth control one time and it was a very horrible experience with my cycle being irregular, with it, um, my mood swings, my mood being altered, with me not having a desire for sex at all. Like, I, I think that, that birth control, if I would have stayed on it, my damn marriage would have been ruined. Seriously. Because don't nobody want you being mad at them every day because you're in a bad mood because this birth control got your hormones all off balance. And... Don't nobody want you bleeding all month long to where you can't give them no pussy. And then when you do stop bleeding, you ain't even in the mood for sex. So, Oriel, I'm going to be getting with you um, really soon so that we can discuss this, um, these birth controls and the pros and cons and the purpose of it. Because a lot of times what people don't understand is if you've completed your family, then sometimes you need to look at a more permanent method. Okay? So, um, I had my tubes removed. Um, but I still have a menstrual cycle, okay? I didn't get a, a, a full hysterectomy, a partial hysterectomy, or anything like that. I actually had one of my ovaries removed because um, it was giving me a lot of problems with uh, cysts kept growing on them. And one of the cysts actually got big as a grapefruit. And y'all know how big a grapefruit is. And that becomes extremely painful. But um, I actually had one, one uh, ovary removed. Um, but... We're going to get into it because this group is about sexual health and wellness. Meaning that it's, it's good to have a lot of sex and have fun in the bedroom. But we got to talk about the wellness side of it too. And I think that's what's going to make this group a lot different than uh, some of the other groups that they may have out there for women. Um, don't forget today, if you are interested in doing fun parties, home parties, hotel parties, my meeting is going to be today at 6 p.m. Please be on time. Please do not be late. I'm going to be honest with you. I consider on time early. If you come in at 6, I consider that late. And I'm just being honest with you. I'm, I'm real big on time. So um, if this is something that you're interested in, make sure you're here at the PPG store today by 6 p.m. Because at 6 p.m., I'm going to start talking to whoever here. And if ain't nobody here in this back room at 6 o'clock, then guess what? I won't be building a team. You know why? Because I want to build a team with people who are ready to work and who are ready to get out here and push what I'm pushing and who ready to, you know, help me with this movement that I'm on. Because, you know, I tell people all the time, I could be a movement by myself all day long, but when we come together, we are a force, okay? So only if you're serious and you're interested, no, this is not gonna require any money for you to start it up. Yes, I'm gonna be providing all of your promotional material. Yes, I'm gonna be providing your photo shoots. Yes, I'm gonna be providing your t-shirts. Yes, I'm gonna be providing your product. All I need is you to come ready 
to work. That's all I'm looking for. I ain't asking you to invest a quarter. I'm putting money in your pocket. I ain't taking none out of it. Okay? I don't know too many jobs that's going to be paying you $50 an hour. If you go to work every day and they pay you $50 an hour, then this might not be for you. But if you work in a job and you feel like, you know what, I would love to go to work and make that $50 an hour, come see me today at 6 o'clock. Okay? Sean, 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 congratulations again. Congratulations again. Let's see. I'm trying to make sure that I have covered everything today on Sex Talk with Sharonda. Uh, let's see. Right, I love this group, learning, learning new tricks. Uh, that's what happened with you on birth control. I got pregnant while on birth control. Yes, yes, yes. Tubes grew back after two years. Yes, that's why I got my tubes removed. I, they don't even exist in my body anymore. Got my, yeah, mm-hmm. Let's see, I'm just making sure I got everything on here. So, again, positive vibes only, y'all. And another thing, because I, you know, I had to go in and erase some of the comments that was made. And it's going to get to the point where I'm just going to stop erasing the comments and I'm just going to put remove member. Because we, we growing, y'all. Like, we are really, really growing. Like, we are literally adding about a thousand ladies a week to this group, okay? So, we are growing, so all of your uh, issues that you having with your man because you're in this group, you might not need to be here. If you're having issues with your woman because you're in this group, you might not need to be in here. This is supposed to help. This is not the love connection, the dating line, the place where you're hooking up to do your threesomes. This group was created specifically for sexual health and wellness and to create a sex positive platform for you all to come together and learn. Now, if you so happen to be the love of your life in here, congratulations. Congratulations that you all met up in the um, Sex Talk with Sharonda group. But if you come in here because your man and put you on a mission to go find a woman so that he can have his way with both of y'all, you probably won't have a good experience up in here with me. Because that's not what it's created for. So that means if you on here talking about some who eating pussy today, I'm trying to see something. Nobody will ever see it because I ain't approving that bullshit because that ain't what it's for. Post that shit on your regular Facebook page and see who bite. Put it on your regular page. Don't put it up in here. That's not what this group is created for. So, oh, that's why I don't be posting up in here like, like that no more because people take what you say and run with it. Well, let me tell you something. Anything that I post, I can back that shit up. And anything I post in here, I will post on my regular page. Have no problem with that. So what I'm saying is I'm a grown woman, so anything I can say once, I can say twice, and I don't really give a fuck about who feel, how anybody feel about it. So if you posting something and you getting backlash from it, then you need to check your mind to see why another person can come and tell him anything about you. That's the shit that I don't understand. Why these outside people have that much influence in your relationship? Your relationship ain't as strong as you think it is, and if it ain't strong, I highly recommend you don't bring nobody else in it to fuck. Because y'all ain't even ready. If he tripping with you over this petty bullshit that you posting in this group, why in the fuck you think y'all ready to bring somebody else into y'all mix? And he can't handle just this little shit right here. You know he can't handle another pussy. You know it. He can't. He can't handle another pussy. He ain't even, he ain't even mature enough to handle the shit you posting in here. I know I'm stepping on some toes, but y'all gonna be all right. Y'all gonna be all right. So, um, all of you all that are learning, who are accepting the challenge, I love it when I when I see challenge accepted. I'm gonna be looking for other fun things. When I had my other co-ed group, we used to do stuff like the whipped cream challenge and all kinds of stuff like that. Um, because Facebook has gotten so strict with nudity and all of this kind of stuff, you won't be able to see them. When I had my other Facebook group, we was posting them, them challenges, baby. We, we had posted whipped cream all over the dick, all over the titties, all over the pussy. We had whipped cream challenges. Girl, we had a ball with it. But, you know, Facebook has really gotten strict over the years. But I will still present you with the challenges and the instructions. And y'all just come back and let us know how it worked out for you. Okay? So, um, for those of you all... Um, asking about coconut there was a video i'm gonna try to find the video again and post it back in the group i don't know if the video was taken down but when you're doing the coconut um when you ride it you need to get on your feet and ride baby you can't ride and spell coconut on your knees okay this is gonna require you to get on your feet and bounce on that dick you cannot 
get on your knees and do it. I mean, you got to get on your feet, okay? So you can move your hips and wiggle and move and do the things that you need to do. Sucking the knees for all of you all who have just joined the group, and we're going to move forward because <laughs> it's like we still stuck there. And that was, we on week three, y'all, and we still stuck on week one, but I understand some of y'all coming in and playing catch up. Now, this is the way I do it, okay? I lay my husband on his back. Some of y'all are laying them in on your stomachs and you suck in the back of the knees. Great. I'm going to tell you the way that I do it because I like to be able to reach for that dick at the same time. Okay. I am right-handed. Okay. So I lay this part of my body over the bottom of his legs. I'm below the knees. Okay. I'm laying this side of my body, my left side of my body, over the bottom of his legs. Okay, I'm literally like almost laying on his feet. I loop my hand up and I gently start caressing his dick. I'm not trying to jack him off to bring him to a climax. I'm simply just nurturing him. Okay, so I could be talking. Now, if you want to blindfold him while you're doing this, you're more than welcome to. All of that brings um, a heightened level of sensitivity to the experience. Okay. So, of course, I'm leaning over him and I'm beating his dick at the same time while I'm talking to him. Okay? I'm telling him. I'm asking him, does this feel good to you? Do you like it when I do that to you? Do you know how much I love you? Do you know how much I need you and appreciate you? Because, of course, I'm beating that dick. Okay? And while I'm doing that, I lean over and I gently start kissing his knees. And then the kissing turns into me licking his knees. And then the licking turns to me sucking on his knees as if I'm trying to put a passion mark on his knee. Okay, I'm sucking the skin of it. I'm moving in different areas on the knee and I'm sucking on the knee. Of course, he's going to fidget a little bit. Of course, he's going to ooh and ah and sigh a little bit. I've even had women tell me the man to move their hand and start beating their own dick. Right? Because they was really into the moment. And that's what it's all about. Being into the moment. You can't be down there laughing and giggling and playing. This is supposed to be sensual. This is supposed to bring him to what's called a skin orgasm. So if you want to give him a skin orgasm by sucking on his knees, then do it. But you ain't going to be able to be down there playing. A lot of y'all be silly. When y'all down here, you can literally be full of clothing, your lingerie while you're doing this. Giving him eye candy because this is not about giving him pussy. This is not about making him nut. This is simply to nurture his body. Okay? It's simply to nurture him. Any questions? Any comments? Any concerns? All right. Okay, just so that I can let y'all know, bracelets provided by... Uh, Tash Creations. That's who the bracelets are provided by. This beautiful blouse that I'm wearing today. Um, La Rose Collection. That's Miss Coco. At La Rose Collection. Let me tell y'all something. Because a lot of times y'all be thinking, oh, people just give her clothes. Yeah, sometimes people give me clothes. But I buy a lot of clothes too because I do believe in supporting small businesses. So you better believe if you're giving me clothes, I'm also going to buy clothes from you too. I'm not one of the people that's just going to be taking, 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 taking. So if you're sending me stuff, I'm going to still go on your website and buy stuff. You basically created a customer, okay? If, a, if like a bracelet was given to me, I ordered them too. In other words, if you're giving me something, I'm going to support your business as well. So if you got any type of jewelry or clothes or whatever that you're trying to get out there and promote, I don't mind promoting, but I'm also a person that's going to spend with your business as well. Liquid Virgin does not come any, it's not, a, it's not flavored or scented. It is clear, tasteless, colorless, odorless. That means nobody know you used it but you, okay? That's it. And it goes inside the vaginal canal. A lot of y'all squirting it all over your clit. And I'm like, no, 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 no. You're not tightening up your clit. You tighten the inside of your vaginal canal. So it's going inside of you. You got to open, you got to lay on your back, throw your legs back and bust and pussy open and drop a few drops up in there. Okay? Tasteless, colorless, odorless. It's designed to tone the vaginal canal. Any more questions?
Any more questions? Any more questions? Any more questions? Okay, I think that's going to wrap up Sex Talk with Sharonda. Today we covered the clitoral orgasm. And the one that we're going to talk about tomorrow, let me tell you the orgasm that we're going to be discussing tomorrow. Uh, let me go to my notes. I'm going to talk about the G-spot last because we always talk about the G-spot. We're going to talk about... We're going to talk about the deep spot orgasm. Okay? The the deep spot orgasm is in the back of the vaginal wall. It's, it's, in, the, it's in the deepest part of your vagina. Meaning that some of you may never experience this unless you go out and buy a um like a eight inch or nine inch dildo because he has to have a lot of length to be able to get back there so if you're dealing with a man that is very very short more than likely he's going to be one that stimulates your g-spot a lot he will never um uh, experience you he will never stimulate the deep spot okay or the vaginal it's called the vaginal orgasm or the deep spot um this is located in the very back of the vagina like it's all it's deep 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 up in there um and it's an awesome feeling it is awesome 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 and let me say this before i end this live a lot of times when y'all are experiencing orgasms you are looking y'all a lot of y'all are looking well i ain't see no creamy stuff or i didn't see no liquidy stuff or i didn't squirt y'all looking for the ejaculation Okay, the same way men ejaculate and they produce semen, y'all are looking to ejaculate, and not all orgasms are, are gonna um, warrant you to ejaculate. So a lot of times y'all are looking for something that's not there because the orgasm didn't make you ejaculate. Some orgasms do make you ejaculate, but not all of them make you ejaculate. So a lot of times you looking, he looking. And he like, did you experience an orgasm? I need you to be able to confidently say, yes, I did experience an orgasm. Yes, my body did start tr contracting. Yes, I did get excited. Yes, I did experience pleasure. Okay? So, tomorrow we're going to be talking about deep spot orgasm. That's the one we're going to be covering. And that is the one that is located all the way in the back. Okay, I just want to make sure that Jesus Christ. Another name for deep spot orgasm is cervical orgasm. Vaginal orgasm, deep spot orgasm. So tomorrow when I write it, it's going to say uh, cervical orgasm, vaginal orgasm, deep spot orgasm. That is all the exact same type of orgasm. It just all have different names for it, okay? So that's the one that we're going to talk about tomorrow. So y'all be here. Stay tuned. Um, if you have not subscribed to my YouTube, go to my YouTube and subscribe. If you have not subscribed to my website, go and subscribe. That way that you can always catch up on all of the videos because they will all be posted. The video about doing a show will go up on YouTube this Wednesday because I gave y'all a week to do the show. Um, oh, and... I got a busy week this week, y'all. Okay, let me let me give you my calendar real, real quick. Tonight is um, basically trying to build my team and see who's interested in doing a fun party. Tomorrow, I'm going to be painted by Body Art Diva. She's going to actually paint my body. Um, that's going to be tomorrow night. And I'm not going to go live with it. Um, but Spencer will do some. He's going to do a photo shoot with it. So we'll have some... Um, some visual aids he may do like a video or something like a recap video so that y'all can actually see the process so yes i'm gonna be naked and i'm gonna get painted um and i'll be working with body or diva tomorrow a lot of people have been reaching out to me y'all to get work done um wednesday i'm gonna be with blitz travel and we're gonna be talking about traveling with your sex toys and your novelties and stuff and how some countries don't allow you to bring your toys in and the countries that do allow you to bring your toys and how do you get your toys from TSA without being embarrassed, okay? So we're going to be talking about traveling with sex toys and that's going to be on her live Wednesday night at 9. Um, I have a party Thursday night. I have a party Friday night. I have a party Saturday night. So I have, uh, I'll be booked up all of those dates. If you're interested in Thursday night parties for the month of October, Thursday is available. All Fridays and Saturdays are booked up. And, um, 
I'm gonna check, but I think the link to the fan, the um, the costume party is gonna be um, it should be on there. I, Quinn, Quinn is my my IT person. Quinn should have put it up there by now, um, so that you can all start going on and buying your tickets to the sexy costume party that's coming up in uh, October. October is also Breast Cancer Awareness Month. I'm gonna get with Orel again. Orel, I'm calling your name out. I'm gonna um. Be going live in the clinic with you, and you're going to be showing everybody how to do the proper breast exam, so get ready. Um, yes, you will be utilizing my breast to do the exam. I ain't got much, but I'm willing to be the the um, the, the, the the subject or the model, or whatever you want to call it. Um, and I think that's pretty much it. I'll be busy, y'all. I'm, I'm really, really, really busy. Uh, I, I keep saying I think that's about it, but I feel like I'm missing something. I feel like I'm missing something. Okay. Well, I think that's about it. Make sure y'all um, tag people in the video. Meaning, you know, make their name highlight or however y'all do. <laughs> Send a video to it. Share it to them. Do whatever you got to do so they can get this information. Again, today was the clitoral orgasm. We talked about the clit. That's the most common one tomorrow. We'll be, we will be talking about cervical slash vaginal slash deep spot orgasm. Y'all be blessed.